Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we're going to continue on with managing the score manager. I'm going to take a look at some of the uh, playback functionality that you can access directly from the instrument list within the score manager. So I've got my file set up, and I've pulled up my instrument list, and we're going to look at a few, uh, a few of the functions uh, in the, the whole in the in the columns here that I'm circling. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is this, this section right here. We have record, mute, solo, volume, and pan, and those are pretty much what you'd expect them to be. You could change the the volume directly from the instrument list if you'd want. Um, it's a good way of you know doing a quick and dirty mix uh, right from the instrument list. Um, you can solo an instrument or two or three or mute instruments as you need. And if you click record, this will put that staff into record mode for if you're going to record in, in uh, hyperscribe. If you're going to enter notes that way, you can do that, okay? Uh, working from right to left, we have uh, this section over here with program, bank, and channel. Now, the program is mostly going to say one if you've got uh, play finale through audio units checked in your MIDI audio. If you change over to play finale through MIDI, it'll reload the sounds from smart music soft synth and these the numbers will change these are uh, basically the the midi program numbers uh, basically correspond to the number of the sound within a general midi set but we're going to go back to audio units and it will reload those sounds all right bank um, is going to is going to tell you what bank you're playing from if you go to audio units uh, there are eight banks to be played from. If you have a lot of staffs, these will start to populate with, with more ARIA players. But uh, for now, I only have enough instruments for one bank, so you only see that one active. Okay. And channel is just that. It'll, it'll choose the MIDI channel within that bank. All right. <coughs> um, right next to it, we can actually change the sound. And it's pretty easy to do, actually, in this uh, set. I don't want the orchestra trumpet player. I want the jazz trumpet player. And I want the jazz trombone player. So that's kind of how you can easily change sounds. And uh, certain s sounds that Finale populates, there are variations of sounds. So let's look at the electric bass, for example. Let's solo this so we can hear what the jazz fretted bass sounds like. And that's the, the sound that uh, Finale will initially give you. All right. But we can change that to, let's say we want to change that to electric bass finger give you a slightly different type of electric bass sound all right so you have some options there for your electric bass and you have options for a lot of the other uh, instruments that you would put in your score um, there's also a way to uh, access different devices on your computer now I happen to have uh, complete installed native instruments complete so I can access those sounds from this device column, right? So I'm gonna, uh, I have my alto sax here. Let's just hear what this sounds like in Garreton, Finale's Garreton sound set. Silly little melody there. Okay, now if I wanted to, we can change the device. I'm gonna pull this down and you'll see a bunch of different options appear and I'm gonna choose contact five. Now, you'll notice when you choose a different instrument that's not Garreton or the Smart Music sound set, you'll get, these, you'll get this edit player. Um, Finale won't be able to access the specific patches from this column. So you're going to have to click on your edit player, and it'll take you to your contact browser. And I'm going to try and quickly find the saxophone sound that I want here, which I believe is in Session Horns Pro Alto Sax. Right, So we're going to load that. Close this window, and I should have my contact alto sax now. Yep. There it is. All right, so you can easily access any other uh, virtual instruments that you may have on your computer. Uh, for now, let's go back to the Garreton instrument for that alto sax. It's going to take. It always takes a second to reload. We will unsolo that. Um, and I'm going to show you a c another uh, nifty little thing that you can do with changing sounds. Now, I've set this score up uh, specifically for a, a reason. 
And if you look at the piano part here, it's not a piano part, it's a synthesizer, but it is, I added it as a piano instrument and just changed the name to synthesizer, right? What my intention was in the score was to create a, a synthesizer part that has some uh, splits in it. So you can do this in main stage pretty easily. So you notice that I've got the electric piano uh, holding these chords, and I want a celeste sound on top, and I want a cello sound on the bottom. And in the th third and fourth bar, I want this to be strings in both hands. And you'll notice that I've done it in different layers. Currently, my synthesizer uh, staff is set to Steinway Piano, as you can see here. So if I solo this, it will sound like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the sounds of those layers, and this is pretty easy to do if you know how to do it. So in the synthesizer uh, column or row here, I'm going to pull down this triangle. This will give me my different staffs. This is the right hand. I'm going to pull down that triangle and pull down the triangle for the left hand as well, and you'll see that you have access to change sounds for each layer, right? which is kind of handy. So in this case, I'm going to change layer one in the right hand to be a celeste. All right. It takes a second to load the sound. In layer two, I'm going to change my sound to electric piano. So let's choose electric piano two. And in the bottom staff, layer two, right, we'll go to layer two first. That's going to be that electric piano sound that I just pulled up. And in layer one, we want a solo cello sound. So single strings, cello solo, okay? So we have layer ones, one and two, and one and two in the right and left uh, hands playing different sounds. And you'll notice that you get a little si uh, note here that says that the, the staff itself is mixed sounds, all right? Um, and then in the third bar, we want uh, just strings. So in, I wrote that in the third layer. So in layer three in both hands, we can go into here, choose section strings, and let's do full strings arco. So load the sound. Same thing in the left hand. Choose layer three, section strings, full strings arco. Okay? Now if I did that right, I have my synthesizer soloed, correct? Yes. Close this. And if I did that right, you should hear all of these sounds correctly as I have them indicated. <laughs> Pretty neat, right? I'm I'm uh, layering sounds. It's it's a it's a neat little function. The one thing, the one limitation to it is that you know you only have four layers, so you can only really choose four different sounds uh, per staff. Um, so th it is flexible, but it's not quite as flexible as as maybe you'd want if you're doing some complicated synthesizer playback. Um, so that is that. The other thing that I want... Oh, yeah. So the other part of this score I set up, uh, in the fifth bar, I've kind of written that same uh, passage in the synth part, except I've added a fourth layer, um, which is a cue for the alto sax. So I just copied that into the fourth layer and uh, changed the note size to 75% to give you an alto sax cue. Now, if I were to play back the fifth bar, I still have the synth soloed, I believe, right? And go to the fifth bar and play. I don't know if you can hear it. It's a little faint, but the, uh, the fourth layer is playing back as piano because if I go up here, you'll notice that in the right hand, the fourth layer is still set to piano. So what I always do is I, I, I tend to, uh, what I'll do is just press the the mute key for the fourth layer and you notice that you'll get these sort of half gray uh, mute radio buttons here in the synthesizer that just indicates that part of the staff is uh, muted but not the whole thing right um, it's a handy little thing that I like to do that allows me to put all of my cues and my scores in layer four and then I just mute layer four in every single one of these staffs and uh, you know it'll it'll allow you to hear back your score 
with all the cues in there without af having to hear certain lines like seven or eight times, depending on how many times you have it queued. So I've muted layer four in the right hand. And if we can go in here and start from measure five again. Now you just hear the keyboard part. You don't hear the, uh, the, the cue. Nifty little thing. And there's one more thing I'm going to show you. I've got this uh, silly little trumpet line set up. Sometimes you'll put chords above uh, a, a melody instrument if you've got a solo. And I just put these ridiculous little uh, expressions in here to to, uh, indic to uh, show you something. So let's unsolo the synthesizer. We don't want to hear that anymore. Let's solo the trumpet. Okay. Just so you can hear what this sounds like currently in bar seven. If I can get there and play. Yeah, you notice it's it's not only playing that melody, it's playing back the chords, which we probably don't want to hear, right? So if we go back to our instrument list, we can pull down the triangle for the trumpet and it allows you to manipulate the chords, right? So in this instance, I'm gonna mute the chords. I suppose it might be a nifty thing to do. You could actually change the sound of the chords to guitar or something. Uh, might be a nifty little thing if you wanted to do that. All right, so if I do it, if I play back from bar seven now, you should only hear just the melody. Ah, uh, shoot, sorry. Getting there, getting there, seven, play. All right, and now the chords are muted. And you can do the same thing. There's one more option here. You can actually manipulate the expressions. So we're going to say we want to mute the expressions. And it will um, it will ignore those silly little dynamics that I put in there. All right. So there's some other flexible things that you can do within that. You know, you can use your creativity, your imagination as to how how you want to use all of this data. You have mute and solo and volume and pan and everything. You can. You know, you can you can fine tune a mix right from within the instrument list. You can mute and solo certain things. You can change different layers to different sounds. There's there's a lot of different uh, ways you can manipulate um, your playback just right from the instrument list and and get some flexible flexible options that way. So it's a nifty little thing to know about if you know exactly how to use all of this stuff. Uh, and I think that's where I'm going to leave it with this. That's uh, the instrument list uh, playback functions. I'm going to do a couple more uh, tutorials um, within the instrument list, specifically the notation style, the percussion, and the tablature uh, notation style. So we'll get to that in a, a couple of videos coming up. Uh, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.